Well, hello, and welcome back to Brave New Teaching. We are really excited today to bring you one of our favorite strategies for opening up a lesson, a gateway activity, uh, opener to a unit, uh, an anticipatory something, whatever you might call it, whatever the uh, edubabble jargon is in your area. It's to spark interest and to get students excited about learning. And it's a strategy that both of us have used for a long time. And we're excited to show you today how it can work out in a high school classroom with deep inquiry. Hi, Amanda. Well, hey, everybody. There's something I love more than a good gateway activity to for kick sure. off a unit. Absolutely. Think, and I'm excited to talk to you about it because I think my favorite gateway activities that I've ever used have come from a really rambunctious conversation with my colleagues and, oh yeah. And what if this, and then what if that, and, oh, what if we did this? That would be awesome. So yes, it's like shiny objects, shiny objects, shiny yeah. objects, something sticks, and then it's really cool and it's fun to do in the classroom. So I have been a, uh, I have been guilty of creating activities that are like gateway or intro or, you know, like hook activities, like we're talking about today that are too much, like, like way too much, just over the top, more work for me than, than the like engagement and learning outcome is worth, you know, but today's activity, it's so simple. It's so easy. I guess we could actually like point directly to what we're talking about today. Okay. Well, let me, I'm going to give everybody a hint. So Today, we're going to talk about using picture books to do this. Okay. That's not the hint. The hint is I want to see if you can guess the book. I'm going to read you a passage, like one of the darker passages from this book that I think everyone forgets. Okay. Let's see if you can guess the book. The sanitation department gave up. The job was too big. Everyone feared for their lives. They couldn't go outside most of the time. Many houses had been badly damaged by giant meatballs. Stores were boarded up and there was no more school for the children. Okay. So that kind of gives it away, but like, holy smokes, like that's a children's book. So today we are going to walk through a lesson plan to introduce a unit in dystopia using the children's book, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. And really the strategy we're talking through is using a children's book as a gateway or an intro activity to really spark deep critical thinking. So we're going to talk a little bit about like why use picture books, because I think for some people it's super obvious, like, oh yeah, there's theme, there's this, there's that. And for other people it's like, and then after that, where do you go? Right? So we're going to talk a little bit to the beauty of the simplicity of picture books. And then we're going to talk through a lesson plan for you. And we actually have that lesson plan that we're going to talk through for you guys to get into your hands, our brave new teaching community. And we will tell you how to do that at the end of this episode. And now it's time to cue the music. Let's do it. You're listening to Brave New Teaching, a podcast for educators challenging the status quo. I'm Amanda, and I'm a high school English teacher in Illinois. And I'm Marie, and I'm also a high school English teacher in Southern California. We're so glad you're here. Enjoy the show. All right, Amanda is the one who originated this lesson plan that we're going to talk through. And as I am the one with children in a classroom at time of recording, next week is the first week of school. And I'm actually going to teach this lesson to my students in either the first or the second week of school. And I'm really excited. I've done similar lessons. I use picture books in my classroom all the stinking time, but I haven't done this specific book and this specific lesson. And I'm really excited. And we've been talking a lot about dystopia lately because we have a festival all about dystopia coming up very, very soon at the end of September and into October, 2021. We'll give you more details in a little bit, but just, you know, we're, we're going to ride the, the dystopia train for a while here. You know? Well, a lot of us teach it. And I think coming up with a gateway activity for your unit, dystopia specifically is all about number one, it's kind of got to have a layer into your essential question. So you know, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about essential questions for dystopia specifically next week, but if you already have one, or if you're, you're brainstorming one, this picture book type of gateway activity is going to start that conversation. So it's going to be a link there, a picture book. And also Maria kind of said this before the music was your picture books are going to have 
connected themes. So between your essential question and your themes, you're going to have a really nice, like little nugget of an experience with your students to bring into the unit further. How else have you used picture books, Marie, with gateway activities? In my 11th and 12th grade classes, especially, I will use picture books to help me introduce literary lenses and trying on different perspectives because the stories are deceptively simple, right? Because they're, and depending on the level of picture book, depending on the like level or the age of the child that it's geared towards, you can get more simple and then a little bit more layered, layered and complex, but doing something like introducing a gender lens to students for the first time and having them try that on. It's a lot more challenging to do that with a literary short story or with even a novel that everybody knows and remembers from previous years than a fresh text that's accessible because it's meant for kiddos that are younger than our students. Um, So I love, yeah, I've (laughs) I've used the gender of the feminist lens for a bunch of books that I have in my cl- my house. I'll just like go through and like ask my own kid. I change them up every time we do it. And I do a bunch of different lenses too. But every time I introduce literary lenses, I turn to my own children and I say, what should mommy bring to work tomorrow? What are some of our favorite books right now? <laughs> I just grab random ones because that's the beauty of it too. Like you can just change them out depending on how you're going to use them. So like when I do it with lenses, I do it that way. When I've introduced uh, just literary terms and like concepts, like theme, like diction, like, you know, you can really point to like even uh, books that are written in verse that are, that are rhyming books for kids. It's a great way to go through a lot of poetic devices. There's some good stuff. And they don't always have to be used at at the gateway point of a, of a unit. Like Maureen said, like they might be uh, introducing some kind of skill that you're working on. I know that I've found a lot of success using hair love while teaching Raisin mm-hmm. in the Sun, uh, really beautiful, just parallels. And I think just to underscore something that Marie said, there's something for us to really think about as English teachers here about when we introduce new and more complex skills to our students to be cognizant of the complexity of the reading that the students are using that new skill on. And so I try, I've tried over my experience to, to change that up. So like if the new skill, like using a critical lens theory, I try to reduce the difficulty of the text as it's introduced. Right. And then you increase that, that complexity or vice versa. If you're introducing new, more complicated texts, like we'll talk about this more with our dystopia stuff. If you're reading a really hard text, well, maybe you're going to focus on things like characterization. Like to setting. Start, right? Yeah, exactly. Setting. Yeah. <laughs> you're you're going to get really surface. Yeah. Where everyone can be together. So it's, it's where, when we get into like that hard area, it's because the skills hard and the text is hard. And, and that maybe even if you're finding that you're struggling, maybe that's a little, a little point to consider. Yeah. There's a build to get to that certain point. And it depends on the kids in your classroom. It depends on the class that you're teaching. Um, it's also Utilizing a strategy like bringing in picture books is a great practice in inclusive instructional strategies. Yeah. It's a 100%. fantastic and equitable way for everybody to be able to access the same text and to start at that level with difficult uh, strat or difficult skills or, or concepts or topics. And even though, yes, we are going to talk through an English language arts lesson this is good for everybody. You can get some great science concepts and some great scientific inquiry. You can get some great historical or social science, critical thinking going, using books about historical, you know, I mean, events or about any sorts of things. Like it, it really is endless when you start to go, oh, the concepts are just broken down. You know, I used to think I could be a children's book author. Like, what is it? maybe two pages of writing, maybe, right? All broken up with all the, pic- okay, yeah, I can't draw. I'd have to get an illustrator. And then I sat down a couple times over the years to be like, okay, let's do this. It sounds so cool. Let's try. It is so stinking hard yes. to make it good. Yes. And so children's book authors are in a league of their own. Like it's a yes. whole different genre from other literature because it's a very niche skill and niche area to make them good. I mean, I could write a really crappy one. Sure. I could do that right now, but. Well, let let me hit you guys with another why, as we kind of transition into the rest of this episode and 
getting into the lesson itself. So I really like using Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, the picture book as a hook or as a gateway activity here, especially because kids come at that lesson with this very naive, oh, this is adorable. This is childish. Like we're going to be treated like children today. And, And they really come unassuming. I'm then able to knock them over the head with some hard questions but they all cut and they all kind of have that, you know, we, if you guys listened a couple episodes ago to our interview with the keeping the wonder girls, you know, one of the elements they talk about is this element of surprise yep. and everyone, like as Marie is saying, not only are they equitably able to access the text, but everyone comes into it and has this like, well, boom, like boom in the face surprise, like, oh crap. Like she's going to ask me some really hard questions that I just was not expecting. And that element of surprise is wonderful to have at the start of a unit. Absolutely. Um, and I'll also, I'll mention right quickly, I'm going to teach this unit and I'm, or this lesson, and I'm going to record it and put it on YouTube So just kind of stay tuned because about a week after this episode comes out, you'll be able to see parts of the lesson in action. And we are really excited to just show all of this and kind of how it goes and like peel back the veil a little bit. We talk a lot about how we do things, what we do, but like actually showing you it up on its feet is something that we are excited to try. So let's talk lesson planning. Let's talk learning objectives. The learning objectives for our cloudy with a chance of meatballs lesson goes like this. The first learning objective is that students will gain an understanding of two major vocabulary, like, and conceptual terms, utopia and dystopia through this lesson. And the beauty of it too, is that you don't stand up there and write utopia and dystopia on the board and then define them and then find examples and do all of that. You just go through it and they come up organically. It also goes through the skills of discussion and critical thinking. We also have students practicing reflective writing. And another thing that kind of comes out organically is it begins to bubble up the elements of the genre of dystopia are introduced and start and you start playing around with that through critical thinking, discussion and reflective writing. Exactly. Those are our learning objectives. Not very well written for like an observation, but there (laughs) they are. (laughs) Whatever. (laughs) So let's talk through Amanda. You get into a classroom, you've got, you know, however many little eyes staring at you like, oh, Mrs. Cardenas, what are we going to do today? I don't know why that's how I talk like kids. I love, I love them. That is generally my impression. But that's like, what are we going to do today? Is it going to be a class starts? And then yeah. by the end, you're like, blah, 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 blah. Right. People by the time, like, yeah, are we doing anything it. important today? No. No. Nope. Uh, so you come in and you go, no, we're doing nothing important. And then you. I say it's story time. Who wants to sit on the carpet? And then little around children and like, come. What carpet? Because I didn't have a carpet at the time. Um, yeah. And I tell them, well, we're, gonna, we're just going to read a story today. Do you guys want to come sit on the floor? And, you know, a, a handful of kids are like, yeah. Like, and they come I know, right? the floor and they're like, oh, gross. this is gross. Um, so <laughs> I, we'll have a classroom decor conversation later about why my floor is so gross. But, you know, that that's really where I start is with very little prep. I want them to be blindsided by my questions and blindsided by the sharp left turn I take, you know, as we get toward about the middle of the story, I really don't give them very much to start with. Is is that crazy? No, not at all. No. I mean, that's like, like we were saying, it's the element of surprise. It's that little nugget of something that's like a spark that they, they don't need to know everything all the time. It's okay for them to just kind of like go along with it. So we begin without anything on the board, without anything at all, start a class, whatever you're going to do your, you know, morning business or whatever. And then you read aloud, just read the book. Right. Yeah. I mean, there's a couple of ways to do it and it really depends on like your bell schedule and your, your preferred way of doing this. I have five tried and true questions that I like to use in this lesson. So you as the teacher have the agency to decide when and where they come in. So you could read the entire thing and then go back and do all of the questions together or individually, or put them in pairs and they can go through the questions. You could also do read and stop Mm -hmm. and you could do read and stop and write. You could do read and stop and discuss out loud. Um, there are a lot of ways to do that, like interactivity with your picture book and you just need to know your crew, right? And where you, and where you want the discussion to go, like how you want the path to lead, right? If, and, and what you want the momentum to be like, cause read and stop is going to be a longer 
process than like read it through, then, you know, like then chunk, chunk, chunk. Yes. So it just kind of depends. So it's basically a three-part lesson plan. You read the book, you've got questions that students are writing the answers to and then discussing. So we'll talk about that in a second. We'll give you an example of one of the questions that's just so stinking good. And then it's a written reflection and wherever it goes from there is where it goes from there. But that is the perfect gateway lesson and activity. It's got so many skills that you're touching on. It's got soft skills. It's got hard skills. Like it's, so we read the book the way that I would do it. And that I will do it is I'm going to read the book. I'm going to give them their little handout, which we have for you in the free lesson plan. And then they're going to go at it. I'm thinking that their bell ringer for the day will have to do with if your favorite food rained from the sky, what would it be? Or if you could eat what, you know what I mean? <laughs> yes, if you had yes. one thing yes. in abundance for the rest of your life, what would you want it to be like food wise or something like that? Just so we can all get nice and hungry and then read the book. And then we go through the questions. And I think my favorite question is the one that you have on there about like, what seems to be dangerous? Oh uh, yeah. Number two, I was situation. looking at that one too. Yes. I, yeah. So, and that's kind of like, so with me, I, I w- I have done both. I also like the read and stop because then we can like close read sort of like reread sure. a little bit of that passage and look at the pictures and say, okay, like I was just reading this for fun, but now here's my question. What seems dangerous about the citizens handing over most of their power to the whims of the weather? What are the potential problems with this power dynamic? And kids kind of look at you like, Oh, I never, I never, I never thought about the fact that the citizens were handing their power over to the weather, but that's, that's exactly what they're doing. Right. And this is, this is one of those moments. Sorry, I just totally cut you off. This is one of those moments when that vocab, those big concept terms that we were talking about of utopia and dystopia can organically bubble up into conversation and into discussion where you didn't have to like make a flashcard (laughs) or like write them up on the board. You can just talk through them and say, you know, and kids can ask questions and blah, 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 blah. So there are five questions that you have. And within those questions, some of them are multi-layered and students are going to pose other things. And we, you know, we're going to change things as we go here and there. But I think that always threes and fives are great places for questions that get kids thinking deeply. And maybe you only reveal a couple at a time and you discuss as you go. Maybe it's a think, pair, share activity Maybe it's a speed dating and you go through different questions. And I mean, it kind of, for my classroom, it's going to be where are we at with COVID, quite frankly, like to determine what that actual collaboration and discussion strategy is going to look like. So I'm, I'm quite interested to see what my classroom is going to be like next week. But the other cool thing that you can do with those sorts of questions, which you've done, is layer them in complexity. They, they both lead through the, I almost said the novel, lead through the, the story of the book, like sequentially. It's a great way to do that. But they also lead through sequentially in layering complexity. And, and almost always, as I said at the beginning of the episode, right, the goal of this is, is the learning objectives that Marie listed out, but also this is going to serve as an introduction to my essential question and those elements of the genre. So my questions with Cloudy, specifically, if you're going to teach this lesson and, and why I think Cloudy is so powerful is because there is this kind of assumed naivete of the citizenship, right? All of the citizens are just you know, electing to live their lives and, you know, just kind of go with the flow. And that's exactly one of the problems highlighted in dystopia is that citizens haven't really questioned what's going on around them. Or once they start questioning what's going on around them, right, they're murdered. Um, so right. everything, I, everything falls apart. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I, you know, with cloudy, it's kind of cool too. Like you'll see as if you haven't read the story in a long time, you may have seen the movie, but if you haven't read the story, it does get dark. I mean, the pancake that falls on that person's house has to be removed with multiple helicopters and a tow truck. I mean, people are trapped inside. I mean, there's spaghetti up to the people's knees and as silly as it is, like when kids start to look at an actual dystopia, the fact that the people were so blind to the potential danger in the first place, like that's where I want to come back. And like, that's what makes this book so sneakily beautiful is that we can come back to it. It's an anchor text for the rest yes. of our unit well, in all of its simplicity. And for somebody like me who does choice novels more often than all class, it's something that everybody has in common. 
Yep. It's it's one thing that everybody's got a deep level of understanding because we've done it as an all class. And then it's something that I can use as the thread to pull through their four, five, six, seven, eight choices of novels that they're reading in their little groups and that sort of thing. And then at the end of it, you get to pull in another skill because yes, these, these discussion questions are critical thinking and they're a bit reflective, right? Because it's kind of like put yourself in those shoes, but then to bring it all together, it's always wonderful to have like a culminating reflective something that we have in the lesson plan as a written reflection, but can really go any way you want it to go. I, I'm knowing my own teaching style. It's going to be a three minute quick write with who wants to share, share with your partner. And then who wants to share out something cool you talked about, right? Like just a quick. Yeah. Or if you are in the place where you want to, this could be extended over several days. Like the written reflection is basically them creating their own very, very simple. Like what would this abundant life look like? What could the problems be? But that could very easily be scaled into something larger and project-based if that's something that you want to do. So it's just really a nice template for um, you to take and pick and choose what's going to be best for your students, the time of year that you teach this and what your kids need. Yeah. Well, and so we do have, like we said, we specifically have this lesson plan for you for free. And we're going to tell you how to get it right now. As I mentioned earlier, we have a dystopian festival for teachers, dystopian teacher festival, free content coming up for you. September 27th is when we actually start the festival, but you can go register now. And when you register, you will get access to this lesson plan. So head to the show notes, bravenewteaching.com or go to curriculumrehab.com slash dystopia and get your hands, your digital hands on this lesson plan. And then also be signed up for five days of free content talking about teaching the genre of dystopia. We talk through why and how dystopia and and some strategies for introducing dystopia. We talk through a bunch of different things, different examples of units we teach of all class novels. I am going to go through one of my choice novel dystopia units. Amanda's got some amazing poetry and short stories and film. We've got nonfiction supplemental texts, not just what they are, not just what we do with them, but how you can weave in like the strategies to use. So you don't have to use our stuff. You can use other things. And we're really excited to share that all with you. Like I said, the festival itself is completely free. And if you go right now, head to the show notes, you can click the little linky loo, register for the festival for free and get this lesson plan clouded with a chance of meatballs and try it with your class. If you had fun in the spring with the Shakespeare Teacher Festival, if you were able to join us then, if you're a new listener, welcome, but old, oldies, you old uh, people, (laughs) if you had fun with us uh, during the Shakespeare Festival, we've set it up the exact same way. Um, So it's going to be those lessons come to you through your email. You'll get a notification every day and it'll say, hey, welcome to day one. Welcome to day two. And you'll get your videos each day of the festival. Uh, Marie and I will be on social media uh, celebrating with you, talking to you, interviewing you, all that kind of fun, energetic stuff. And uh, we'll keep all the good vibes going. And we're just going to we're just really excited. There's no merch this time though guys. Sorry. We didn't Nah. Dystopia <laughs> merch didn't really feel like it just it didn't legit. feel well. <laughs> it honestly just didn't feel right. Anything no. we came up with was like, oh. Oh, that's yeah. horrible. Oh, we can't a little, a little dark. We can't wear that. Yeah. So also, there's a lot going on. So it's yeah. all good. <laughs> we just, we, we wanted to focus on the content and that was just one uh, extra piece we had to take a break on. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But we are really, really excited. Like we said, head to the show notes, bravenewteaching.com to take out, take a look at the other, you know, what we talked about in this episode and to get your hands on this lesson plan, register for the free festival. I know I keep saying we're excited, but we are. We just love creating this stuff, but then things like the festival, let us interact with all of you. And we get to like share. And if you're not already following us on Instagram, um, at brave new teaching, we'll be there and just tag us and share what you got. We have all kinds of cool stuff. And if you try a, uh, lesson plan using a picture book, maybe in the same fashion, but it's a different one. Let us know how it went. Tag us. We would love to be able to share success stories and see how things go and like create a big, just brain trust basically. 
Well, and use this as an opportunity to be uh, of service to your department. Uh, this is a free PD opportunity. So why not share this with your department chair, share this with your department, your teammates, um, and do it together. There's nothing really more powerful than being able to talk about what you learned from us with other people. I mean, I, and that's how I feel about other people is, you know what I mean? Like when I go to a conference, I, I'm like grateful if I get to go alone, but I'm much more grateful if I have my teaching team with me and we can, you know, watch or listen. And then for the next 20 minutes, put into our calendars exactly what we're going to try, how we're going to try it, and just have conversation about what we've learned and how that looks with our students in our school. Yeah. You get to process it through. It just makes a whole lot of sense. Yeah. We want to meet more people too. So bring them on. Yeah. And actually, while you're at it, if you have not already taken a moment to give us a rating and review on iTunes, we would ever so appreciate it because it helps some of those other teachers out there who might be looking for a community like this. It helps them find us. And if this episode or the episode from last week, living in a dystopian world, right? All the reasons that we love dystopia and we think that it should be everywhere and should be taught in every classroom. If those are speaking to you and you think they would speak to some of your friends and colleagues, share them out send them their way so that they can join us and we can all be merry good friends. Thank you all so much for listening today. We are very excited to bring you content brand new every single week. We are loving it and we hope you are loving it too. So until we meet again, that land on your house, not be too large and may them come with butter and syrup friends until we meet again, we will see you next time. Bye-bye.